CIET-NCERT presents curriculum based series Dhwani Shala So friends let's join in Dhwani Shala class 8 Warm greetings to all of you This is Kavita Saxena presenting to you class 8 geography chapter 4 agriculture In the first session we have revised what is agriculture sister branches of agriculture types of agriculture uh, like primitive subsistence farming intensive subsistence farming commercial farming its various types commercial grain farming plantation farming and mixed farming then we discussed about few crops few important crops which are grown in the world i hope you have marked all the areas in the world map as well as the map of india you can also mark these crops on the world map as well as the map of india and show it to your subject teacher you can even collect seeds of wheat rice jowar bajra ragi maize oil seeds and pulses available in the market bring them to the class and have an activity asking your friends about the different pulses or you call them dal okay pulses are commonly known as dal in our country so you can bring different pulses in small packets to the class and ask your friends to identify which is this pulse in commonly used terms the pulses are known as arhar moong urad like kali urad safed urad we have tur so you must do this activity in the class in order to get well versed with the pulses that we consume they are the most important source of protein in our diet after the food crops we did the two important fiber crops we read about two important fiber crops cotton and jute and where they are grown in the world as well as india in this session we are going to start our chapter by studying about two main beverage crops the most important beverage crop in the world yes it's coffee coffee requires warm and wet climate and well drained loamy soil hill slopes are more suitable for growth of this crop and you know the country which is the leading producer of coffee in the world it's also known as the coffee pot of the world yes think think about it it's very famous yes i think you guessed it right it's brazil okay so brazil is the leading producer followed by colombia and india in india farmers grow arabica variety a little story about the discovery of coffee you know sometimes it comes to our mind who discovered the coffee plant there are different versions about the discovery of coffee but it is said that in about 850 AD kauli an arab goat herder who was puzzled by the queer antics of his flock who were just grazing around some place so he was wondering what had this goat eaten he also tasted the berries of that evergreen bush on which the goats were feeding on experiencing a sense of exhilaration he proclaimed his discovery to the world so coffee is a substance which provides you energy now we come on to the most important beverage of india most important beverage of india and it's yes always the tea time you have seen people getting up in the morning and having tea 
the first thing in the morning so tea having tea is like a ceremony in india and every time someone invites you he always says come for a tea okay even the ads are filled up that aroma coming from the tea and someone is inviting you to have a cup of tea tea is so important in india that every time you ask someone and definitely his answer would be a yes Some of you may be coffee drinkers or tea drinkers. Again, please do this activity in the class. How many children are coffee drinker and how many are tea drinkers? Tea is a beverage crop grown on plantations. This requires cool climate and well distributed high rainfall throughout the year for the growth of its tender leaves. It needs well-drained loamy soils and gentle slopes. Labor in large number is required to pick the leaves. But if you have noticed labor and that to women labor is employed more in tea gardens because picking up tea is a very tedious task. It requires a lot of patience which is definitely there. found in female labor so females are employed in large number on tea plantations to pick up the leaves kenya india china sri lanka produce the best quality tea in the world and indian tea of course is famous all over the world now we come on to a topic of agricultural development What do you mean by agricultural development? Agricultural development refers to efforts made to increase farm production in order to meet the growing demand of increasing population. But how it can be achieved? It can be achieved in many ways such as increasing the crop area. The number of crops grown improving irrigation facilities use of fertilizers and high yielding variety of seeds even mechanization of agriculture is also another aspect of agricultural development where a large number of machines helping in agricultural work are manufactured the ultimate aim of agricultural development is to increase food security that means food should be available to each and every person in a country agriculture has developed at different places in different parts of the world developing countries with large populations usually practice intensive agriculture where crops are grown on small holdings mostly for subsistence larger holdings are more suitable for commercial agriculture as in US Canada and Australia with the help of these two case studies of farms one from India and one from US let us understand about agriculture in the developing country and other in a developed country first let us take the case of a farm in india there is a small village adilabad in gazipur district of up munna lal is a small farmer in this village who has a farm land of about 1.5 hectares his house is in the main village he purchases high yielding varieties of seeds from the market every alternate year the land is fertile and he grows at least two crops in a year which are normally wheat or rice and pulses the farmer takes advice of his friends and elders as well as government agricultural officers regarding farming practices he takes a tractor on rent for plowing his fields because in india most of the farmers are not so rich therefore they cannot own a factor in india 
As you know, most of the farmers are not so rich, so they cannot own a tractor, which is comparatively expensive machine. So they have to rent it out. So he takes a tractor on rent for plowing his field. Though some of his friends still use traditional method of using bullocks for plowing, that's balgari. There is a tube well in the nearby field which he takes on rent to irrigate his field. Again, he has to take a tube well on rent. Munna Lal also has two buffaloes and few hens. He sells milk in the cooperative store located in the nearby town. He is a member of the cooperative society which also advises him on the type of fodder for his animals. Because if a farmer is giving good fodder to his animals, then only you can expect good products from these pet animals or domestic animals. So, he takes the advice from the cooperative society for the type of fodder to be given to his animals. Safety measures to protect the health of the livestock, right? Because there are so many diseases which spread out in the animals. And from animals, they move on to the humans. So one has to be very protective. Then he takes certain lessons on artificial insemination in order to have good breed of the cattle. All the members of the family help him in various farm activities. Sometimes he takes credit from a bank or the agricultural cooperative society to buy HYV seeds and implements. He sells his produce in the mandi located in the nearby town. Since majority of the farmers do not have storage facilities, they are forced to sell the produce even when the market is not favorable to them. This means that if they have a good produce but they are not storing it properly, it will be damaged or destroyed by the pests. So they have to sell it in the market whatever cost they are getting. In recent years, the government has taken some steps to develop storage facilities for these farmers. So, this is an insight about the farmers in a developing country. After listening to this case study, I think you will come to know about the condition of a small and a marginal farmer in India. In contrast, if we talk about farmers in developed countries like US, where the average size of a farm is much larger than that of an Indian farm. A typical farm size in the US is about 250 hectares. In India, it was 1.5 hectares, but a normal farm in US is about 250 hectares. The farmer generally resides in the farm. Major crops grown are corn, soya bean, wheat, cotton and sugar beet. Let's take a case study of an American farmer. Joe Horan, a farmer in the Midwest US, in Iowa state, owns about 300 hectares of land. He grows corn on his field after making sure that soil and water resources meet the needs of this crop. In America, the farmer is not bothered about the rainfall. He is getting proper water supply in his fields. He has good machines to irrigate. So, he grows corn on his three hundred hectares of land. Adequate measures are taken to control the pests that can damage the crops. From time to time, he sends the soil samples to a soil testing laboratory to check whether the nutrients are sufficient or not. 
The results helped Johoran to plan a scientific fertilizer program. His computer is linked to the satellite which gives him a precise picture of his field. This helps him to use chemical fertilizers and pesticides wherever they are required. He uses tractors, seed drills, leverer, combined harvester, it's a very big machine. Okay? and thresher to perform various agricultural operations. Grains are stored in the automated grain storage or dispatched to the market agencies because they have a huge demand all through the year. The farmer in US works like a businessman and not like a peasant farmer. So comparing these two case studies, let us find out the main differences between a farmer of India or a farmer of US. A farmer in India is not very rich. He owns a small portion of land where he grows crops twice in a year. And those are food crops. As for the advice, he has to refer to his friends or relatives. Since he is not rich, he does not own any machines. He has to take tractor on rent, maybe tube well on rent, or uh, seed drillers, harvesters, whatever he needs. He has to wait for electricity for two, three days. And sometimes, if the machines are not available for watering the field, he has to depend on the mercy of the rainfall. Whereas, the condition is absolutely different in America. The farmer here acts like a businessman. He has definitely a large share of land with all mechanization possible. He is growing crops for commercial purposes. He has to send the produce to the market. He has proper storage facilities available to him. He has even taken the pegs of his fields from the satellite with the help of a computer. So. A farmer in America is highly educated. He knows what type of fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides to be used and how to save his crops. Therefore, farmers in India has to improve a lot in terms of agricultural knowledge. This is all in this chapter. So let us have a quick revision. What we have done in this session. We have started off the chapter with two important beverage crops, tea and coffee. These are the two important beverages in the world and uh, in the world if you talk about it's coffee and India, tea is the most important beverage of North India whereas coffee is predominantly uh, is a predominant beverage crop of southern part. We have talked about the climatic conditions required for its growth. Then we have come on to an important topic, agricultural development, which is the need of the day. It refers to the efforts made to increase palm production in order to meet the growing demand of increasing population. And the ultimate aim of agricultural development is to increase food security. What is food security? Food security exists when all people at all times have access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food to meet their dietary needs and food preferences for an active and healthy life. Therefore, in a country like India, we have to ensure food security for all our citizens. 
at the end we have compared the farmers of a developing country india and a developed country us in what terms the farming activities the farmers are different from each other so after reading the analysis of the developing as well as the developed country i expect you children to make a note of all the developments that can be made in an agriculture you can find out the difference between the lifestyle of farmers in us and india collect the pictures from magazines books newspapers even internet and can make a report on the lifestyle of these farmers you can actually go to the farms and even have a word with them that's how you will come to know the real farm life i hope you have understood the topic well do read the textbook for a better understanding of all the topics and underline important terms and keywords now let us have an insight into the important terms which we have learned during the delivery of this chapter organic farming agriculture sericulture pisciculture viticulture and horticulture you should know the difference between all these terminologies then we have done different crops so you should be able to understand the climatic conditions and the places where they are grown then we did an important concept of agricultural development definition of food security these are the important terms we have done in this chapter now we come on to the types of farming the most important is the difference between the subsistence agriculture and the commercial agriculture the two basic types of farming we have read about is the subsistence farming and commercial farming under subsistence farming we have done intensive subsistence and primitive subsistence farming even we have read about shifting cultivation and nomadic herding under commercial farming we have read about commercial grain farming mixed farming and plantation agriculture then we did a case study on the farmers of india as well as the farmers of us with regard to the questions you have to read the chapter thoroughly for otqs that's one marker any content can be asked you in the form of fill in the blanks or mcqs or to and false and the most important aspect you have to cover are the crops we can also do the activities as part of our internal assessment as i have told you agricultural crops can be depicted on the map of india as well as the map of the world you can also collect the seeds of different crops and put it up in a form of scrapbook you can speak about the condition of farmers in a developing country or a developed country collecting all information with the help of ppts or news reports which we get in magazines newspapers books etc i hope you have got a thorough understanding of this chapter thank you friends you are just listening to the series dhwani shala production assistant kusum lata recorded by bati langlingdo and mayank kumar produced by vandana arimardan and this program is brought to you by cietncert new delhi india